Charges stemming from an investigation of a firm where drugs were traded for both cash and inside information. Tim Ullinger has the story. Government prosecutors are calling it Operation Closing Bell. As of late Thursday afternoon, 19 people, including 16 Wall Street brokers, had been arrested for cocaine possession and dealing. In this investigation, cocaine became an integral part of the personal and professional lives of these brokers. In some instances, cocaine was used as a bartering instrument for customer lists, stock, and information. At least nine of those arrested Thursday were employees of a brokerage firm that deals in penny stocks. Brooks, Weinger, Robbins, and Leeds. The government prosecutors say one of the firm's owners, Wayne Robbins, was part of a network of drug trafficking at the brokerage. Robbins was arrested, and for the first time ever in a drug case, the government will try to seize part of his brokerage firm. During the afternoon Thursday, federal agents entered the Brooks offices and began seizing records. A company attorney said Wayne Robbins was only charged with cocaine possession and that the firm will continue operations. A broker at Prudential Base Securities was also charged. Meantime, federal prosecutors say Wall Street drug dealing is commonplace. Clearly, there are a lot of cocaine on Wall Street, and clearly this case is not an aberration. New York police also arrested over 100 others, many on minor possession charges. And that comes as no surprise to many who work in the brokerage houses. This man works in the mailroom at a brokerage not named in Thursday's indictment. There's a certain person, I can't say his name, he likes, you know, sells throughout the bill and everybody knows him and... Everybody just... Sells you know, cocaine? Yes. Yeah. The federal agents say the use of cocaine on Wall Street is widespread. And they say Thursday's arrests are only the tip of the iceberg. Tim Ullinger, CNN, New York. This is not the only goings-on like this in Wall Street. Those arrested included workers for Advest Inc., New York Depository Trust, and the brokerage firm of Brooks, Weingart, Robbins, and Leeds. The Brooks firm is also being investigated for allegedly trading drugs for stock information, among other items. The affidavit includes instances of a broker sending a free sample of heroin through the messenger service at Brooks. The drug arrest came only hours after arraignments for four accused inside traders, former Kidder Peabody Vice President Richard Wigton, former Goldman Sachs partner Robert Freeman, and former Merrill Lynch Vice President Timothy Tabor. All pleaded not guilty before U.S. District Judge Milton Lasker to a variety of securities law violations. In fact, Wigton's lawyer Stanley Arkin was adamant that his client would triumph over what he called a crock of a government case. All right, so in a nutshell, you are saying that the government doesn't have a solid case against you, right? I am saying they don't have any case. Now, come on, let's go. Mr. Giuliani says his case is, is the strongest against you. Well, I think... That's just not so. Whatever the case, less than an hour later, broker Boyd Jeffries did plead guilty to a stock scheme involving Ivan Bosky. Jeffries of the fear that the stigma of AIDS will only add to the okay, burdens well, of racial discrimination. At any time that you focus on blacks and Hispanics as a group, you provide the opportunity for that discrimination. We have lived with racism for hundreds of years, and we're going to still have it for hundreds of more years. Uh, but we can't, we won't be alive at all if we allow the AIDS virus to spread among our people. Beth Nissen, ABC News, New York. District in recent weeks, and it was capped off yesterday by the arrests of 17 Wall Streeters. As Dave Monzies reports, drug officials say they're not surprised. A federal drug official says this is not an aberration that the arrests Thursday only show cocaine is part of life on Wall Street. The 17 Wall Street workers caught in combined raids by city and federal officials raised again the question of the drug's influence here. Experts say 10 to 20 percent of the people who work on Wall Street use drugs, some of them responsible for massive amounts of money. Dr. Arnold Washington co-founded the cocaine hotline and now heads his own drug treatment program in Manhattan. Uh, recently, I saw one uh, cocaine-using investment banker who works on Wall Street who reported to me that the main reason he came into treatment is that he made a $2 million mistake while high on cocaine. How many millions or billions have been lost to all of Wall Street's investors by brokers compromised by cocaine is almost an imponderable. So many brokers, so many investors, and so much money. Some drug counselors are making special provisions for Wall Street drug abusers this is a therapy room in the private Washington Institute on Park Avenue. 
It looks like a corporate boardroom because the patients here are all top Wall Street executives. And the purpose is to make them feel comfortable, to make them feel at home. Even the day after the big broker's bust, Wall Streeters were still talking about the one firm, Brooks, Weinger, Robbins and Leeds, where eight employees were arrested Thursday and about the common connection of Coke and brokers. Some of these kids that make a lot of money and it really goes to their heads and, and they end up with a problem. I, I was really surprised at the extent that it had penetrated in one single firm. That was really shocking yeah, to me that, that it was that organized. Experts say cocaine is such a problem on Wall Street because it fits the lifestyle, fast lane and upscale. But for some here, the fast lane has already hit a dead end. Dave Monsies, CNN, New York. Our Myron Kandel says drug use on Wall Street has long been an open secret, and he has this analysis. Mike? Bill, the big surprise of yesterday's drug bust on Wall Street is not that it happened, but that it took so long for the authorities to crack down. Even the most naive visitor to the financial district in recent years couldn't help but notice the drug use and dealing that was going on in the open. It didn't take a big stretch of the imagination to guess what was going on behind closed doors. Drugs mean big money, and if there's one thing Wall Street is flooded with these days, it's big bucks. I'm not suggesting that drugs are any more prevalent in the securities industry than in other fast-track segments of American society. But on Wall Street, the pace is more frenetic, the money more available, and the stakes are higher. In the old days, institutional salesmen plied their customers with tickets to sporting events and Broadway shows, and some say even with women. Now, rumors have it, the payoff for those who want it can be drugs. Ten years ago, I reported in a syndicated newspaper column that bookmaking was taking place on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. The story made front pages across the nation and raised a ruckus in the street. Today, it would hardly raise an eyebrow testimony to how far we've come or how far we've regressed. Insiders tell me there's nothing you can't buy in the floors of the exchanges these days. The securities industry has a special responsibility to the public it serves. It's now at long last turning its attention to insider trading. The time is long overdue for the industry itself to crack down on another abuse and a worse one, drugs. Wall Street doesn't need another black eye, Bill. Well, if it is long overdue, are, in fact, any of the Wall Street firms doing anything about it? Well, only one that I know of, Bill, uh, has publicly announced, that's Kidder Peabody, that it's requiring uh, drug tests of its employees. I think and I hope that others will yeah. follow suit. Well, we better see some action soon. Thanks. Bob. Bond broke four days of silence today, angrily responding to allegations that he is addicted to cocaine. I have not committed or been charged with any crime. As far as we are concerned, the matter is closed. The charges of cocaine abuse are the subject of investigations by Atlanta police and a soon-to-be-convened federal grand jury. The allegations were made last month by Bond's estranged wife, Alice. According to this confidential Atlanta police report, Alice Bond alleged her husband uses cocaine at least every two hours on a daily basis. This woman was named in the report as Bond's girlfriend and his drug supplier. Today, she turned herself in to police, charged with assaulting Mrs. Bond. Bond calls the matter a family affair, but now there are allegations that the police may have tried to smother the investigation. There are even questions about Mayor Andrew Young's involvement. He advised Mrs. Bond by phone last month to reconsider what she is doing. And, uh, I uh, have not done anything to interfere with anybody's investigation. I've simply basically tried to help friends of mine. Julian Bond was a star of the civil rights movement, a Georgia state legislator for two decades. He was nominated for vice president at the 1968 Democratic Convention. But last year, he lost a bitter congressional race to John Lewis. Drugs became a campaign issue. I challenged Mr. Bond to take the drug test. Calling the tests inconclusive, he refused to be tested then. He refused again today. Uh, no, I'd never take a drug test. As long as I live, I'll never take a drug test. Whether Bond is hiding a drug problem or caught up in a nasty domestic dispute will be determined by investigators. Tonight, many of his supporters are hoping this controversy won't destroy a distinguished political career. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Atlanta. Accused of using cocaine since 1983, Bond's estranged wife, Alice, brought the charges along with naming the mayor and other prominent city officials as drug users as well. On top of that, there is suspicion of political interference within the Atlanta Police Department investigating the case. I have found myself embarrassingly caught 
uh, in the middle of this situation. And I'd like to say, for whatever it's worth, that I have not uh, ever even seen cocaine. Any allegations about my involvement with those kinds of drugs is absolutely ridiculous. Young said he would gladly submit to a drug test if necessary to dispel the allegations. He also denied any knowledge of Bond's alleged use of cocaine. Mayor Young did say he knew that Mrs. Bond went to the police with the drug charges following an ugly street fight last month with Carmen Lopez Butler, a woman Mrs. Bond says is her husband's girlfriend and drug supplier. But prior to Mrs. Bond telling the FBI the story, Young admitted he phoned Mrs. Evidence. Bond and advised her along these uh, lines. Uh, well, at first she said, maybe I shouldn't go then. And I said, no, if people are there and if you've agreed to, to testify, you should go. But you should only talk about what you know and what you have good, firm evidence on. Two Atlanta detectives who took Alice Bond's statement were shortly afterwards transferred off the case, thus raising suspicion that Mayor Young might be culpable of obstructing justice. My involvement has in no way worked to obstruct justice, uh, and it will not at any time uh, work to obstruct justice. Uh, nor have I been involved uh, in any way in the transfer of any offices for any reason. Earlier Thursday, a federal grand jury convened to evaluate the charges brought by Mrs. Bond, but U.S. Attorney Robert Baird said Alice Bond was granted permission to postpone her testimony until next month. In the meantime, Barr said his office would continue to pursue the matter. Larry Woods, CNN, Atlanta. Investigation. Have you ever used cocaine? I've never used cocaine. Never at all. Never at all. Julian Bond on an Atlanta radio talk show today, denying drug use and accusing the media of irresponsible reporting. These people become like sharks in the water. Senator Bond, is it there's blood and they're after. Reports that Bond was accused of heavy cocaine use first surfaced last week. Atlanta newspapers and television stations reported that Bond's estranged wife, Alice, seen here in his unsuccessful campaign for Congress last fall, told police he and some other prominent Atlantans were cocaine users. Two of the police officers investigating the case were transferred soon after Alice Bond met with them, prompting charges of a cover-up. Julian Bond calls the charges made by his estranged wife a family matter. It remains, however, our business and not the business of those professional scavengers and rumor mongers who have made life hell for innocent people whose only crime is that their last name is Bond. Atlanta Mayor Andrew Young, traveling in London today, said he had asked Alice Bond to reconsider her comments to police about drug abuse. Well, I know she didn't have hard evidence on some of it, because uh, some of it was pertaining to me. <laughs> But a U.S. attorney will look into the Bond case. Uh, in my opinion, whenever we have allegations concerning public, figure, public figures and public officials, it takes on added importance, and we believe it is more important than an average case. On Thursday, a federal grand jury will begin examining police reports on the case and will decide if Julian Bond is the victim of unfounded allegations or should be tried for drug offenses. David Hazinski, NBC News, Atlanta.